All right, well, thank, thank you, Bob. That was a great presentation. In fact, Bob probably didn't realize this, but about four and a half years ago, Bob and I had lunch in Washington, D.C. in a hotel at a Transportation Research Board meeting, and that, that meeting kind of sent me the course of following him and following all the, the thoughts and ideas he has, and it actually helped culminate us into uh, what we passed last year. Robert Brown here is on our board, and he's chair of our Transportation Planning Committee, and his committee is the driving committee that pushed forward the Managed Lane System Plan in Atlanta. If you haven't looked at our plan, it's pretty aggressive. Uh, it's going to cost a lot of money, but in the long run, I think it will pan out to be a, a really, really good effort. In fact, we're making the first strides of that uh, plan now. Uh, he mentioned a moment ago, I-85 in Gwinnett County is a demonstration project. It is a one-lane conversion of the existing HOV lane, uh, which worries some, but we did have some good news. Uh, on a one-lane conversion, we called the folks in Minnesota who'd done some of that work, and they said that 97% of the time, that lane during peak hour has not dropped below the desired speed limit. In our case, the desired minimum speed limit is going to be 45 miles an hour, uh, so that would be great. I, I see uh, Representative Rogers and others who use that corridor quite a bit, and there are many times, uh, you know, I live in Gwinnett, that you would kill <laughs> to pay whatever it takes to get to your kid's ball game, to get to that uh, function at church or a wedding or a funeral, and just having that choice uh, is going to be very, very beneficial, I think, to the region. The second project we have going uh, is the northwest quarter up I-75 uh, in Cobb County. We are working through that project. That is an elevated structure, talking about innovative design. We're going to make use of a little bit of the right-of-way we have on the west side of 75 and do an elevated structure, two lanes. It's going to be reversible. So in other words, in the morning time, it's coming into town. In the afternoons, it's going out. And we're also adding a lane on 575 up toward Canton. Uh, the third project we have kind of that's in the works right now, uh, we're going to fund hopefully next summer, is on I-75 on the south side of town. And so people are sometimes surprised about the south side of town, but we got Henry County rep here knows on Saturday and Sunday, the worst congestion we have in all of Atlanta is on I-75 south of 675. It is just absolutely amazing to see that amount of just tourism, trucks, you name it, they're all out there and it's just packed to the gill. So we're hoping that that project, and we're working through, right now the initial thought was to close that median in and put a one lane each way, but it looks like we may even change that to do the reversible lane structure in that corridor as well. So we're hoping to fund that next summer. The biggest problem we have with the managed lane system program is probably the funding aspect. Um, we, we did a pretty big study, and it depends on what numbers you look at, but to make these work from a P3 standpoint, probably gonna take still about 33 to 50 percent of the cost of the project may have to be funded with public funds. So if it, the project on Northwest Quarter, if that's a billion dollars, we may still have to come up with somewhere between 350 and 500 million dollars to build that project. The problem I have is I don't have that money on the public side. Um, we are just struggling mightily in Georgia and the reason we're struggling uh, is because the system of taxation for infrastructure, which has worked marvelously in this country, the gas tax, is not going to work in the future. Uh, we, I love the gas tax. The gas tax is probably the best user tax out there. You know, as, as in a group like this probably would think so too. The gas tax didn't exist throughout the years. It actually didn't start till actually the 50s. It was a very low amount. Before that, most roads are actually were toll. Most transit companies were actually private companies until 1930s and 40s. But over time, we've gotten to the situation where we're relying heavily, almost exclusively on a state and federal level, on the gas tax for our revenue stream. Certainly at the local level, we're relying on local SPLOS, but on the national and state level, the gas tax is the bread and butter. And <clears throat> the problem we have here in Georgia is no different than the problem we have in South Carolina and Alabama and Tennessee, all around the south, as well as California. The, the revenue stream from the gas tax is going to be real stagnant over the next 10 years. And it's because of two reasons. One is people just aren't driving as much as they used to. And heck, we try not to, we tell them not to, right? We tell them to carpool. We tell them to, uh, we tell them to ride transit. We tell them to uh, trip chain. We're building live, work, play communities, right? We all, so you don't drive as much. So the m amount of miles driven is probably going to be pretty, uh, pretty straight line over the next 10 years. The, the line that's really hurting us, though, is the motor fuel efficiency. So in other words, um, I give this example all the time. I've driven a 19, 
89 Silverado until I guess about 2003. Then I got a, a 92 Silverado. So I've had Silverados all my life. Well, I usually got about 16 miles per gallon in that Silverado. Well, last March, <clears throat> I bought my dad's Toyota Avalon. I now get, at a minimum, 24 miles per gallon. So my personal contribution <laughs> to infrastructure investment for transportation just went down 33%. Because I'm driving the same amount of miles I drove before. So that problem, when you lay it out there and look at it, you know, by 2020, our revenues for transportation may be less than they are today. Now think about that. And we haven't really increased our investment, and we actually did a, a big study a couple of years ago. McKinsey Company came in, and they, they really lay out a, you know, a, a very good economic model saying, hey, listen, you did a great job in this country. And in Georgia, you did a particularly really good job. You built a great freeway system. You built a great airport. You've got a great port down in Savannah and Brunswick, for that matter. You've got a great network, but what have you done lately? And I always ask this question because a lot of folks in here, I guess you're all from Georgia, what's the last interstate system in Georgia that opened? You said 616, that's wrong. Somebody said it over here. 675. Yeah, what year was that? Yep. Think about that for a second. We're, we are considered a high growth state, right? High growth Atlanta is, off, and we haven't opened an interstate system since the mid 80s. Now, we did open Georgia 400, which is not an interstate but still an interstate type facility, but we haven't made major investments. So we've been coasting on that past success all these years, and we've done great with it. Our economy's prospered, but <clears throat> mobility now is threatened. And I always look at an example the speaker gave a minute ago about China. Mobility is what made this country great. The ability to go from place to place with not having all these hurdles in your place. Like, you know, back in, you know, Eisenhower tried to get across the country back in the 40s, and he couldn't make it. That's why he said, I want mobility. I'm going to build an interstate network, and he did it. It took a long time to have that happen, but we've got, we've got mobility in this country. We've got great mobility in Atlanta, but our mobility is threatened because of congestion, and we do not have reliable trips. So, hey, reliable trips, that's what Bob's all about, right? That's what you're doing with these managed lane system plans, but we obviously have not made that investment because we're ha now we're having to resort to these types of efforts to provide reliable trips on corridors that you can't widen anymore. <clears throat> so we're excited in Georgia because I think we've finally come to grips as a, as a state and we recognize these facts. And <clears throat> our General Assembly battled over the last two or three years. In fact, there are a lot of folks in this room that have been part, part of that battle on what to do in Georgia. So this last year, uh, House Bill 277 was an attempt to get us to a point where what can we do to increase investment in infrastructure? Because we know if you invest in infrastructure, whether it's water, whether it's roads, infrastructure investment tends to be one of those economic drivers. So we, we were very excited this last year they passed a bill that actually allows for a significant increase in infrastructure if the people of the state of Georgia want to go that path. Let me give you a little bit of overview of House Bill 277. For those who don't know, a lot of folks in here helped write the bill. You can probably come up and give this speech, but it does create 12 speci special tax districts within the state. And these tax districts are bounded by the regional commission boundary lines. In Atlanta area, that's Atlanta Regional Commission, which is a 10 county boundary. Coastal Georgia, that's 10 counties along the coast of Georgia. So you got 12 of these regions throughout the state. Each district can levy a 1% sales tax for a tier near period. Well, why a 1% sales tax and not a gas tax? For the reasons I explained a minute ago. Yeah, a gas tax increase would be nice. The federal folks are absolutely grappling with that right now. In fact, if you saw the news, a glimpse of it this week, last week, the budget deficit committee is actually recommending a national gas tax increase. And, uh, but they want to use that gas tax increase to reduce the deficit and not, they do, for transportation. Well, we have to I watch that. Really though. Commend, oh, I know. It may not stay that way, but that's what they proposed. <laughs> For years, the, the gas tax on a national level was used to help balance yeah, the books yeah. on the budget, so we wanted to go toward you know, infrastructure investment. Uh, <clears throat> the tax is, uh, is basically not a, it's not a county tax. It is a region-wide tax, so you've got to get this whole mindset of my county boundary, what are you going to do for my county out of, your, out of your thought process. The money raised in the district 
where the tax is stays in that district. So the, the Atlanta money stays in Atlanta. The Southwest Georgia money stays in Southwest Georgia. We always laugh because both those groups think their money's going to each other. Um, <laughs> it is a, it is most of the money is subject to a, a huge project selection process, a criteria development process, but a percentage of the money is actually given to the local governments. The money that uh, that's goes through this criteria and roundtable uh, process is uh, that's a lot driven by the director of planning position that I, I sit in today. And ultimately, uh, local governments will ultimately decide. It's through a roundtable process. In other words, there is a representative from each county that's the county commission chair and also a mayor elected by the mayors of a county. Those come together. So in Atlanta, you got 20, 10 county commission chairs and you got 10 elected mayors, plus they go to this special allotment for the mayor of Atlanta. So you got 21 members on this round table. These are local leaders will ultimately select the projects uh, that will be voted on. The vote will be at the next statewide election. Obviously this bill being passed last year and not being signed into law until June, it could not make the rigors of getting before the voters uh, this last uh, Tuesday because it just wasn't enough time to do the marketing, et cetera. So the next statewide election is actually not until 2012, which actually turns out to be a pretty good thing because the economy is kind of bad. I do want to point out something. <laughs> as bad as the economy is, and everybody telling me all the time, well, gosh, you don't want to do a referendum when the economy is bad. There are some reports right now, we're, we're validating all these numbers, and Bob, you probably have seen this too, somewhere between 70 and 77% of all the referendums in this country that held transportation on them passed. Think about that, guys. This is a bad economy in the vast majority. And that actually, that rate of passage was higher than the previous three years. So that tells you if you can show people what they're going to get for their tax dollar, they will vote on it. So that's what we've got to make sure we do a good job at. Ultimately, the funds don't start flowing until 2013, and I know that sounds like a long ways away, and it, and it really is, but um, that, is, that is the time frame of the bill. That's a map of the regional commissions. For those who have not seen that map before, these were actually developed by the Department of Community Affairs, working hand-in-hand -hand with the region commissions. that used to be the RDCs. You have heard of those before, and they've consolidated some of those. Just to give you a, an idea of revenue forecast uh, for the bill, this is in 2013 dollars. Uh, you can quickly, you know the region you probably live in, you can see how much that raises in Atlanta. You can see, you know, the bulk of the money uh, raised by this tax would be in Atlanta. <clears throat> now, understand, one region can pass it and 11 could reject it. Or 12 could pass it, right, and none could reject it. Each region is not dependent on the other. So in Atlanta, it's about half the money. If you raised them, if you add all those numbers together, it's about $1.5 billion in new capital. Just to give you an idea, when you take off the debt service we pay and you take off um, a lot of other things we have outstanding in our regular program, our regular federal aid program, we're really only spending just over a billion a year. So this is a significant increase over our regular program. Now remember, the regular program stays intact. This does not replace the regular federal aid program that the state uses. This is additional money. I mentioned to you a moment ago, I, it, I got to explain this to a lot of people because this is the reason the bill passed the General Assembly. A large chunk of the money does go directly back to the cities and counties. This wasn't quite as important in the Atlanta area, but when you got into rural Georgia, this became critical to the passage of the bill. Um, so it's distributed back to these cities and counties by formula. So if your district, say you're in South Georgia and your district gets 70 a million a year, 25% of that will go to the cities and counties directly by formula, not subject to this round table, not subject to any criteria. They've got to meet the definition of a transportation project. <clears throat> that gave those local governments a lot of say on the use of this money. They've even got a lot of say on the use of the regional money, but my point is it, this is really very locally driven. A lot of folks came out and said this is a state-driven process, the director of planning has too much power. I've read the bill probably 100 times, probably more than most everybody in here, and it really is it. I can set the criteria, I can work with them hand in hand, but ultimately that decision point is, is driven down to the local level. <clears throat> There's the project definition. Just uh, you quickly see, I want you to notice this, <clears throat> look at the bottom bullet. 
sounds like a normal splice possibly bikes buses it basically covers everything but it covers something that you haven't seen before and it says <coughs> operating and maintaining the same see the last line that is very unusual for splice programs and it is absolutely a critical element to this uh, sales tax so if you have a transit project it allows for that the operation and maintenance of it. if you have a road project you can add operation and maintenance as well I'm going to skip over this. A lot of you guys have heard some of this uh, in the newspaper, but this is the membership of the roundtable. <clears throat> but I do want to talk about what I'm going through right now. We're in the criteria development stage. We just released the criteria, uh, the recommended criteria to the roundtables last week. And uh, we're going to be scheduling those meetings the first part of December into the first, in probably I guess the first week in January. All 12 regions will have a meeting. And they'll be discovered, they will be actually going through the criteria. And the criteria matches up with our strategic thinking statewide. <laughs> These four um, items were directly taken out of our statewide strategic plan. Very similar probably to most states have similar type, you know, support Georgia's economic growth, ensure safety and security, maximize what you have, and minimize the impact on the environment. Very, very common theme in most statewide plans. But these projects have to do that, number one. And then number two, you got to be able to deliver the projects. If you can't deliver it, it will never pass again you come up for a vote next time and number three the projects on the list have to have public acceptance in other words they got to be projects that people want or they're not going to vote on them there's the ballot question quickly look at that a lot of folks uh, are critical of what happened uh, we had a ballot question about multi-year contracting and the language in that ballot question was very difficult and very hard to understand this is a little bit easier to understand um, still written yeah all of them are written by lawyers. <laughs> so, you know, and they don't want engineers to write them either. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the ballot question. And, uh, and just to let you know, Georgia DOT is going to be hooking up with Greta. Greta is going to help deliver on the transit side, and we're going to be doing the road side, particularly in Atlanta. So if you want information, feel free to call me. I, I give uh, some like a gazillion speeches. I, I am in the education mode right now. Not in the marketing mode, I'm in the education mode. I'm trying to educate local officials because there is so much information that's bad out there. And people just uh, say things that aren't true and you have to go in there and you, you meet with these city councils and county commissioners and when they finally understand the bill, they see how you probably can make this work. And uh, we, I always laugh, the example I had was back home, uh, Representative Rogers and I spoke up in Hall County. We had a bunch of folks bad mouth in the bill. When you, you spend about an hour with them going through it, didn't you feel like they really, they go, wow, you know, this is not as bad as we thought. And we have ap opportunity here to do something good. So um, I'm excited um, for the next couple of years. Obviously, once the products are selected, a massive campaign is going to start where you're going to be out marketing this. It's going to be led by the, the Chambers of Commerce and those kind of folks. So I'm very excited about it. And thank you so much for allowing me to come to you today and uh, give you a little insight into the bill. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. Thanks.